Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing the Cartier Ballon Bleu Chronograph in yellow gold. This watch, with its distinctive lenticular form, is part of the Ballon Bleu family that launched in 2002 and became the It Cartier watch of the 2000s. It looks like something Louis Cartier would have designed were he alive in the modern era with a wonderfully organic combination of compound curves. This is a large watch in yellow gold, 44 millimeters in diameter. It's 14.9 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, the watch measures 46.8 millimeters across the wrist. Now there are a lot of odd measurements of this watch online. Take my word for it measured case only, not the crown shoulder, not chronograph pushers. The diameter of this watch is 44 millimeters. Now it wears like a lugless watch, and I'll demonstrate why that is. You might think for 44 millimeters, 46.8 across the wrist is not all that large, and that's because the lugs are super stubby. They're barely there, and you can see on my wrist, the watch actually wears naturally. Even though my 16 centimeters circumference wrist is a bit small, I could easily wear this watch. And in fact, I think you could pull it off on a wrist a little bit smaller than mine, 15 centimeters, if your wrist is more oval than round. Now, though the watch is not terribly thin, it is one of the most dramatically cambered and sloped case flanks that I've ever seen, especially when you consider how much the thickness is the height of that domed crystal. This watch will slide underneath the dress cuff. It also has a wonderful solidity to it. It feels like money, which undoubtedly it costs, but not every expensive watch feels expensive in the hand. This one does. The bracelet is a distinctive H primary with polished intermediates, and everything here has been polished. We have removable links fixed by screws, and take note, every link is removable, so you should get a good fine sizing. The bracelet uses a double folding clasp of surprisingly thick gauge gold, making it feel almost like a sports watch clasp. It is a double fold twin trigger release. You press it and it pops open, but you must press the triggers. It's not friction fit, fit. It will not pop open in the event that you do violence to your wrist or you jerk away or there's sudden motion. This is a watch that will stay resolutely secured because this clasp feels robust enough to be put on a Royal Oak offshore. Now, everything about this watch is robust. It's also beautifully seamless. You can appreciate that there is a case back but you can't actually see it when it's on the wrist. So you have this monoblock mid case and bezel that makes you wonder how the watch goes together. We have rounded, polished chronograph pushers. We have the Ballon Bleu crown, which of course looks like a blue balloon. And it has a sort of a Fabergé egg quality about it. Part of the mystique of this watch is that crown. It features a narrow beaded profile and a dramatic crown guard structure but the watch is automatic winding, and that's a good thing because these aren't the easiest watches to manually wind. There is a blue spinel, translucent material built in, and then we have a bezel that actually traces the arc of the case, and you can see that very well here. While the case itself is seamless, there is a little bezel separate from this mid-case and bezel combo that abuts the sapphire and the sapphire is dramatically domed. You can see it creates a lot of the off-axis effects you would expect on a vintage plexiglass diving watch, and that is part of the charm of this model. The dial features a rosette pattern at center, and as you can see, the numerals are lacquered. There's a little Cartier secret signature down at seven o'clock. We have a bit of an inversion with the date over at nine o'clock. It does have a quick set system. There's also hacking seconds, and we have blued hands at center. Each of those sub-registers for constant seconds and chronograph minutes is sunken into the dial and features its own little internal rosette pattern. Now on the reverse side, it's a little bit difficult to see, but we have a movement made by JLC for Cartier. And historically, the connection between LeCoult and later Jager LeCoult and Cartier has been a robust one. Today, they're both in the Richemont group, but the history is a long and distinguished one. We have a movement that is based on their 750 series chronographs, but with only one barrel, it has an automatic winding 47 hour power reserve rather than 65. You could see that we have a column wheel, vertical clutch chronograph operation. So we have the same seamless engagement via a vertical clutch and the crisp column wheel feel that you expect from a premium chronograph caliber. Again, we also have the quick set and the hacking seconds. 
and we do have a beat rate of 8 beats per second, just like the 750 series. In addition to the column wheel, which allows you to cycle the functions, we have a vertical clutch. So if you look closely, when I start up the seconds hand, there's no jump stagger, nothing at all. And I can leave the chrono running full time if I desire because there's no additional play, wear or tear from a vertical clutch. All of this is water resistant down to 30 meters. So this is a large and expressive Cartier chronograph powered by a caliber 8101 provided by Jagere LeCoult. And that is as good as a pedigree can get for a watch. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.